This is a DAISY database that we developed in a previous video. But this time we are going to add a switchboard. Here is the switchboard and that opens up when you open up the database. And people can just click on what they want and it gives you an overview of all the courses. You can double click on there. We discussed that in another video and you can drill down. But what is new, each time I press Control X, it closes the forms in that reversed order. So if I go for instance to the instructors, I can also do it in one step, Control S. It closes all the forms except the switchboard. Uh, we make sure that the user cannot see the panel to the left, the navigation panel, so they have to do it through here. Unless they know the password, then they can display the navigation panel. And I click on OK. If you click that off, then it temporarily hides it. But if you want to click it on again, you have to use the password. So what is new? The only new thing is a search box here in the right top corner. A switchboard, two macros, auto keys, and to the switchboard, and the module has been expanded. So I can also use the search tool. Say you want courses, and you click on a specific course, that's what you get. Control S will take you automatically back to the switchboard. What is new in module one? is a public declaration of an array, of a string array, that I called array forms. How do you make it an array? By typing open close parentheses. It, it will store every new form that you drill down to. The fill buttons one we discussed in the previous video. The sorting one we did also. What is new is a function that is called insert SQL fields. It returns a string and it needs a string for the table, the from variable as an integer, and up to as an integer. We declare ORS of the record set type, internal variables. We set ORS to the current database from the table definitions, the one with the specific name of that table, and we open the record set. If there is an error, we Resume next, and we run i from the lower integer to the up to integer, and we declare an SQL statement. It, it keeps building that up, SQL, and then an open bracket, the first field name, so I can regulate which fields we want to do from from to up to. And don't forget to close that thing. We are going to add a comma at the end and we keep building that SQL statement gradually and then later on we take that comma out, that last comma out with this statement. And then we say we want that select statement, those fields from the table that we had determined there and we order by the second field. And then we return that SQL statement through the function name. Then we put an error alert in there. Everything can go wrong. We do the to the switchboard function that I will explain later. We do some do commands to reset settings. An error has occurred, etc. Then we have a form opening subroutine which form on error go to error trap we uh, declare an integer va type variable we maximize the screen we find out how many elements we have in the array we do that with the u bound keyword we read in the array with preserve otherwise you lose what you had in there already to i u b that was the u bound value plus one so we add an extra one we put in that last one that added one the new form name and we make sure now that 
Then we do a form closing event. It's basically the same story again. This one we can delete. We redim the array now minus one. And that last one that is now at the end, we make that visible true. The other ones before were set to visible false. And then we do a subroutine to the switchboard. We do until the forms count is zero. That means we close all the forms and we open the form switchboard. And finally we have a function starter that runs that subroutine. Why a function? Because I'm going to call that later on from a macro. And macros can only run VBA code if it's a function. So what is in the form switchboard? All the command buttons open a specific form. I think that speaks for itself. The only thing that is not so clear probably is the form load. When we load the form switchboard, we, we maximize it. We also open the search box form. We set the, the checkbox display panel to false. We redim the array, it has not been redimmed yet, to one element in an array that is the zeroest element. And that first element is the name of me, which is the switchboard form. And the, the checkbox display the pane when someone clicks on it, on or off, then we check if the value is true. Then we ask you for a password, for we don't want the user to go to that uh, uh, navigation panel unless they know the password. I use the password secret. If it's not secret, then I set the value back to false and I exit the sub. Otherwise we do the command F11 with the send keys subroutine. And F11 makes the panel visible or non-visible. Then we have a search box form which is new. When we load that form, it has two combo boxes on it. We are going to fill those combo boxes. We set certain things in code to make that form pop up and to set the border style and the min max buttons. You can only do that at design time. I cannot do that in VBA. So then we are going to empty that the combo box from what was ever in there before. We set the row source to an empty string. The row source type is a value list. And we go, we run through all the forms in the current project. <laughs> if the first three characters of the form name are FRM, you see I, I named all these forms FRM, students, students, etc., except the subforms and except the switchboard and the search box. And the right is the plural one. That means it ends with an S. Then we add that item to the combo box of the forms. When someone updates that combo box of the forms and selects a specific form, then we are going to um, call the insert SQL field from the module one. And then I set that to whatever you had chosen in the combo box forms. That is one of the specific forms. And we add the TBL name to it again. And we are going to uh, say to that combo box to the right of those two, use that SQL statement for the row source of that box. And then when they update that box, the second one to the right, which it is called the combo box names, we open that record set with that specific name from the current database. If the first field is of the long type, that means usually it's an auto number, then we set S filter to that name and then equals. <coughs> and then from that name, the C long version. So we convert it or cast it into a long one. Otherwise, if it's not a long one, then we have to make a string inside a string. This is the string, and inside that string we have to open a new one. 
that is a single quote inside the double quote. And then the name of that CBO combo box that you had selected. And finally, we have to close that single quote, double quote, single quote, double quote. As form is now add the prefix frm to it. <coughs> Do the command open form. And we used the open arguments one, which I explained in the previous video, and we maximized that. So now we are going to implement a little more in the single form. This is new. <coughs> Call that form closing. Where does that come from? From module one. And use form opening. But form opening had an argument. What is the form name? Me name. And you do that in all the singular ones too. Form department has that. Form instructor has that, etc. But in the plural ones, we have to do something else. The first one we did already, but the second one, all that is new in there is the sub form opening. We did already the third sub, and the last one is new too, that is form closing. And we have to do that for all the plural ones. Once you have done that, it's a lot of work. We have to implement two macros. The first one is called auto keys. You have to call it auto keys. That means it automatically runs when you open the database. And we put in there two sub macros. The first one is run the code. And when you run a code, it has to be a function. And that was the function starter. Starter, open, close parentheses. Do not forget to open and close the parentheses. So here is starter, and it runs to the switchboard. This one. Okay, back here. That's the first macro, and we give that the name, control S, caret S. So when you later on use control S, it will automatically recognize that and run the function starter, and starter runs to the switchboard. Then the second sub-macro has control X, and it has only one action, close the window. Then we have to the switchboard macro, I'm closing this macro, to the switchboard, design view. It also has the run code action with the function name. We have basically everything implemented except this quick access toolbar. I would like that button to also run to the switchboard. How do you do that? File, Options, under Quick Access Toolbar, make sure you are selecting the macros you have in your system for this database. And you, you probably don't want to do that for all the documents, but only for this specific one. For that's where it will work. And there is to switch. And just add it to the right panel. I did that already, so it's right there. And you can choose the icon if you don't like it. So I'm canceling this. So from now on, I can also use that guy. So if I open, let me close the panel. Or if I do this one, that one, and I do Control S, it takes me automatically there. Let me do it this time from the access toolbar to switch, closes everything and takes me there. Everything should work fine. If I want to do this for a specific uh, uh, instructor, I get that information. I can close it either with Control Shift S or Control X, Control S, Control X, or from the access toolbar. 